Hi, good evening, afternoon, morning, whatever it is in your neck of the woods. I've been doing a quite a bit in stitching on my little pieces and now I I couldn't sleep last night and I finally fell asleep like six o'clock this morning and then slept all day and now here I'm up and my daughter just is getting ready to go to work. She's going to be there for at least 48 hours. So she's bringing her bedroll and everything with her because she's an, a nurse and the nurses in the ER have to stay. They can't leave until after the storm goes through. The storm is supposed to come through pretty much tomorrow. What is today? Today's Tuesday. Is it Tuesday or is it Wednesday? I don't even know what day it is. It's the 8th, so it's Tuesday, and the storm is coming through sometime tomorrow. I wasn't nervous at all, but for some reason now, I'm getting really antsy. So, to keep my mind focused on something other than a storm, I'm, go I'm working on my little pieces. None of these are put down in the book, but I've worked on quite a few. This one is a little frog, and I gave him a little worm, which that's what I want to try and do another one here. This is a frog. <laughs> I made two frogs. There's one, and there's one. This one's with the outcut, and this one's with the um, with uh, the die cut, and then this is the out piece. And so I used both of them and made made one this this one here I um, a lot of times like I'll I'll try to get two pieces that kind of are the same size and I work on one and then I want another one for the backing and I have to cut just a little bit off to make it fit right and then I take all those little bits and I just put them together in a in a cluster and just stitch them down with a button and so that's what all those little pieces that normally somebody would throw away well then nothing gets thrown away and I did the same thing here that's all with the little pieces to make just a cluster and this one here just clustered of pieces this one I put another smaller piece over the top of it and stitched all that down that held all these down and then I did it looks like there's a little worm crawling out of the out of from underneath this cluster of scraps and so that's what I've been playing with this morning is these little um, tendrils these little bullion tendrils this one here that's sticking up is a mistake because I didn't do it right and so then I didn't have any place for it to go down and so he's just sticking up but it looks like a little worm went in and then out and he looks kind of cute. I've been watching two different ladies that do Arianne Zercher I've been watching and Susan Taylor Brown. They both are really good at this kind of stuff. And so I've been watching both of them to get all of the ideas that there is and um, that I can to help me be able to do these that I, these things I want to do and so I'm going to try this again I'm just going to put it right here on this piece this here piece of, of wool was in the scrap pack that I got but it was two pieces put together and this is how they put them together whenever they're just making a bolt or something and I just cut that, I thought that looked pretty neat with all them stitches on there. And so I just put that piece down on there. Okay, so what I'm going to do now. Okay, I'm going to come up. I'm going to come up. Now, the needle I'm using, this is actually a doll needle. And really, they suggest you use a Milner's needle. And now I heard that there is actual... Um, bullion needles that you can get. I don't have a bullion needle, but this is a doll needle. But 
the thing is that the eye of the needle is not any wider than the shank of the needle and that's what you want you want it to be any needle that you have that the eye like this one here the eye is way wider than the shank of the needle so that one wouldn't work because you can't get those wraps off of it easy enough this one works really good and now again a lot of people will suggest what kind of threads to use and like the one Susan Taylor Brown was just telling about um, one that she buys but it's like $25 a skein and I know I if I got $25 I want to have $25 worth of stuff not just one skein this thread that I'm using is very inexpensive it is um, a thread that they sell for like um, friendship bracelets and a lot of girls in school like to make friendship bracelets and change them around ex exchange them with their friends and so this is very inexpensive and it's just a friendship floss which is just it's not like an embroidery floss is going to be six strands this is only like two strands and it's twisted and so this works for me very good so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to i'm going to start i'm going to come up right here and then i'm going to okay let's see if i remember this from in five minutes my short-term memory is going bananas okay so then i'm going to I have two two layers. This is green and yellow. I'm going in between those two layers here. And and I'm going to come up cuz this is this is where how long I want my tendril. I want it to start here and end here. So then I'm going to put up that come come back up. I can't see the needle in the back, but you know, you would if you were you know it's just one one layer and let me see if I'm doing this right and so so now I'm going to just I just do that there I've got my needle down in and then back out so now I'm going to go with my with my thread wait a minute where am I at here okay I'm going to go with my thread here and I'm going to start to, okay, wait a minute, let me, oh dear, I just pulled that thread out of the needle. Um, let me put my thread back in my needle. This is exactly why I don't do, do um, this is exactly why I do not do um, real, um, instructions or tutorials because I don't ever do things right even if I've done them 99 times before okay so now I want that just like this I want now I'm going to take my thread and oh this is what I want I want this piece that's coming out here and now I'm going to start wrapping that around the needle and I'm just going to keep wrapping it and I want it I want it tight but not so tight that you can't pull the needle through it so it's 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 like you got to watch the tension that um, that it's tight around the needle but not real tight so whatever you would call that in real life and see how I've got that now you can see about how long that wrap is here and I want it still a little because I don't want it flat against there I want it to pop up a little bit so I'm going to continue to put some more wraps on that needle and this here is a multicolored thread and so it was in a big knot that's why I got it in pieces sometimes it's easier just to cut it in pieces than try to get the knot out okay so there now you can make these so long because you can pull start pulling the needle through 
at even pulling the wraps off. You see some of the wraps are already off and I can wrap more to make it even longer. Okay, but I'm gonna go with that and now I'm going to start pulling that needle. So I kind of hold my, pinch my fingers at the end of that tendril and pull it and look how nicely it pulls through. And all threads won't do this. In embroidery for us, I don't have, oh, I should have pulled, I got that much to pull through. I should have pulled it through. Oh, it's coming okay. Pull that end through there. Then look at there, what's left. There's that little tendril. And so now I'll just put my needle back down where it just ended and pull that thread through. And there's my tendril on there. And I think I want to make another one. So I'm going to go... Okay, I think what I'll do is I'm going to put this up here. I want it so it'll start right there. Let's see, do I have enough thread? I don't have a lot of thread on my needle still. So, and I want it to cross over that one. So I'm going to go down here. I want it to cross over the one I just put in there. So I'll go down here and then I'm going to put my needle back up and let it come out where I just put it in. Okay, so now it's going to come out right where I just put it in. Now I'm going to, yeah, I got plenty of thread. Um, now I'm going to start wrapping again. Wrap and then I just kind of See, if I wrap up like this way and then push them down, it's pretty much a good tension. I mean, the tightness on the needle is, is close to exactly right. Pretty much, sort of, kind of, similar. But when you're doing any kind of um, work this way, you know that whatever you come up with, is going to be okay if it's not exactly like something that where you learned it you know what i'm saying if it's not exactly like perfect then it's just a different knot it's just yours you just invented it so there you go okay so i have about that much there so now i'm going to pull that through just pull it through holding I got it pinched right there at the top so that it's going to kind of stay where I want it to be put that down there and and then I'll pull that thread through until this loop right here is lost wait a minute wait a minute wait wait a minute wait a minute do I have a knot no it's going good okay Wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to pull. What am I pulling? I feel like I've got a knot somewhere. I've been very proud of myself up until this very second. Oh, there it comes. I had a little, a little knot. Okay, there it went. There, now see how it crossed over? See, now I'll pull my needle, put my needle back down here. And when you're doing a small piece like this, now this is what I'm enjoying so much about doing this small art, is that, um, By doing small, you, uh, well, I, for one, get kind of discouraged and 
I don't finish things because there's so much to do on one something and then you want to you want to um, start something else for me anyway and so then I'll just go ahead and tie that hi sweetheart I'm a babies. yeah a, babies. a bracelet yes it's pretty beautiful but then there it is now I have them two bullion tendrils and I put them together just cross them over just enough to make something pretty and this I have got um, I've got an art canvas in the other room I'm gonna have to go drag that out because I have been working on it for a while I mean it's been a couple years ago I started on it that I've got a lot of things that I'm doing but now I've got on that one canvas and I want to start doing more on it because I got this not discouraged I just got didn't get discouraged with it I just kind of got um, where I just wanted to do something else and so and then it just got put off to the side and it's still put off to the side and so yep that's what what happens sometimes but when you're doing something small and and like this by doing this small all these small things none of them are tacked down yet and I can't tell you if they're finished or not because I don't know and so but now I did some tendrils on there I did some right there I did one right there is that where I just wanted him to look like he had a little worm in his mouth this one here he's got a little dragonfly in his mouth and so this one here this one almost looks like a gift wrapped package now see what I did here was I just made some stitches four stitches to hold these pieces down well I went all the way around that colorful one then to hold those the rest of the three together just those but I'm thinking if I did something like this and did a little tendril around each one that would be pretty too a lot of texture and a lot of fun feely stuff on it and like I told you on my last video that this book is going to be for my husband and um, my husband who is is dealing with a little bit of dementia now and this is going to be his book to um, just as texture something to fiddle 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 around with and it's going to be nice I found this other little piece of stuff I had in my stash and that's pretty and I thought I can take that and put it along an edge or something and couch it down so I put that right there so I'll not lose it and see here this is what I'm talking about this is something I snipped off this is something I snipped off and these little pieces like this that I've snipped off and, and I just I end up a little with a few little pieces that I've snipped off and then I save them. This one's kind of long, so I'll flip it back over. And yes, darling, we'll watch Halloween in just a little bit. But then, uh, where is your chair? Okay, now we have to watch Halloween. Man. But see how that just, just um, put together. Yep, there's your chair. Okay, she's ready to watch Pink Fong. And so we're going to watch, we're going to watch a show. But I just kind of wanted to show you where I'm at with my, with my book. Like I say, none, all different sizes. Some just short and sweet. This one I had left over. This is not wool, but this one's that denim that I was working with on a series. I had that one left over. And so that's going to be in there. But then I let the shape of the scrap, because I have the different scraps and different shapes, and I let that just dictate what I'm going to do. And so now, and, and whatever I do, I might decide that I might want to take a few beads, and I might go with some beads on each one, maybe, a few of these little bitty, real small pony beads that... Yeah, I don't have any on either, any of these ones yet, but but yeah, I'm getting my pages 
get my pages. I'm working on this. It's I I like how it's looking so far, and um, I love how it's looking so far. I just think it's great. And when when Papa comes in here and he looks, he goes, "Oh, what are you doing?" And then he'll reach over the ear and he'll feel, but he doesn't remember already that I've been doing it already. So he asks me again, "What?" what is that you're doing or was it what is it going to be even though he asks me that many times a day every day and then I know that once it's finished and I just leave this book out there for him to use to play with to feel and touch and all that that I know he's going to enjoy it it's going to give him something to keep him keep him busy and so yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I'm gonna let that be let that be for now because I have my little granddaughter here that's ready. She loves to come in here. She's got her own little stool that she sits on. And then she um, we watch the pink farm, which is really fun. A fun little a fun little um, uh, little show for little three year olds. And so she's learning her alphabet on there, her numbers. She knows all her colors, shapes. She knows all the shapes. And so, and she's doing good for being three. And, and so um, I like to spend that time with her. And because when, when she's sitting here, sometimes after we've watched Pink Fong for two and a half hours, I think, oh my gosh. Okay. I mean, yeah, we're gonna watch Pink Fong, sweetheart. And, and then I think, well, when are we going to be done with this? Because then I think, oh, she's not going to be three very long. Because she's almost a three-year-old teenager now. And so, and you know how things work with time just goes by so quickly that um, you just, oh, these are the flyaways. Which one? This one. Okay. We uh, look, I look for a flyaway in my, um my cards here postcards from spirit and the flyaway is the one that i feel like i meant to read today it might not be for me it might be for somebody in the audience that needs to hear hear the um message put on my glasses and let's see dearest you as you think, so will you experience life. Thoughts that, thoughts are that powerful. They need, and they need minding. Let the unruly, chaotic ones settle down so they serve you, or so they serve you or get released instead of wreaking havoc. These thought, thoughts are, arise when connected to the energy of fear and often masquerade as truth. Let the real truth is that, essentially, all is well. Of course you have thoughts that are positive, strong, organized, accepting, creative, open, and so on. Those are the ones we want you to keep thinking. And they have a less friend, they have less, less a frantic quality. They're stimulating in a good way and don't get away from you. How do you keep an inner eye on your thoughts? Meditate and leave judgment out of the mix. Everyone has those fearful thoughts. Love them. Love yourself. Then choose the thoughts you want the world to reflect back. Life is not as hard as you think, loving you so much. This is amazing right now because... And, and this is what I needed to hear because I was going in, to see when you're in, in the path of a hurricane, you get a lot of um, notice. It's not like a tornado that just shows up at your front door and takes it. It's, um, you get a lot of notice. So I have been real good about being very, thinking very positive and trying to spread that around to my friends that are also in the path or more in the path. You just think positive, you know, if you worry or if you worry not, the end result is going to be the same. And so I'm thinking I'm giving all this wise 
advice, and then I um, start worrying myself. Honey, hi, hi, sweetheart. Go ahead and finish, and then we gotta say our goodbyes. Okay, I'm almost finished with this. My, my daughter's ready, like I just told you. She's going to the hospital for at least 48 hours to help people that's coming into the ER, and hopefully there's not many. Okay, so I'm going to leave you as that, and I ask God to watch over you every step you take, every move you make. Hey, gonna kiss and um, I love you. And I see you in a couple days. And um, we're God. I'm gonna go say goodbye to my dear daughter. And I love you guys. And um, be safe, be happy, be healthy, and God bless. Bye bye.